Hello, good night. My name is Aaron Levi Daniel Smith, and I will be presenting the Spanish grammar summary for the Cape and Seaside revision. I'd like to give thanks to God for blessing me with knowledge in Spanish, and I would like to send special thanks to my two lessons teacher, Miss Friday from Palmas, and Mr. Ashley Ramato, who now teaches Southern Community College. Okay, let's begin. Um, I would be covering these topics over here. Okay. Articles, nouns, adjectives, pronouns, etc. Please feel free to pause the video at any time and take notes because it's over 40 slides and it will be a lot easier if I can just skim them through and you can take notes. I'll just annotate them accordingly. Okay, so we're going to be dealing with the articles. Okay, please note that a plus el is al. For example, vamos al centro comercial hoy. We're going to the mall today. De plus el is del. Las ondas del mar, the waves of the sea. Okay, so we just need to note that these two are very important in speaking Spanish and writing Spanish also. These articles are used before nouns in a general sense. No me gustan las tortillas. I don't like omelets. La democracia es una forma de gobernar la sociedad. Okay, democracy is a form of governing society. Right? These articles are used with the names of languages except when they follow hablar, saber, and aprender directly. Okay, so the first one, el inglés es un idioma mundial. English is a, is a world language. Right? Pedro habla español y ahora está aprendiendo portugués. Habla español. Está aprendiendo portugués. Okay, so now that we don't put the articles before these languages. Okay, the articles are also used before titles except when you are addressing the person directly. For example, conocí al Dr. Suarez en San Fernando. I met Dr. Suarez in San Fernando. El señor Marcano sabe español. Señor Marcano knows Spanish. Okay? Now a lot of teachers tend to leave out this el señor and el señorito. Because they say, Señor, ¿cómo está usted? You know? But the correct thing is that you put the ale before when you're addressing them. Okay? Now, el señorito, just a little note. Um, this just, this is equivalent to la señorita. Okay? This just means a young man. Okay? A young gentleman, so to speak. Okay? That is unmarried, that is. Okay. Buenos dias, Senora Sanchez. So here we don't put the article. Okay? The articles are also used to translate on with days of the week. Gulf City cierra los domingos, pero está abierta los lunes. Gulf City closes on Sundays, but are open on, but is open on, on Mondays. Okay? These articles are used before the names of a few countries. La India. El Reino Unido, El Salvador. Note very well that the names of most countries are not preceded by the definite article. For example, España y Inglaterra. Okay? They also use with parts of the body. Tiene los ojos azules. He, she, or it has blue eyes. Alright? Me duele la cabeza. My head hurts. Okay? So notice that la cabeza, los ojos. Okay? It is not used with Roman numbers after names of monarchs and popes when spoken. Okay? Now going on to un, unos, una, and unas. These are translated to mean a few or approximately with the numbers. For example, el pueblo está a unos kilometros de distancia. Okay? They are not used with occupations, especially after ser, unless the noun is qualified. La esposa de Miguel era médica. Miguel's wife was a, a doctor, a female doctor. Later on in the video, I'll explain that some professions now have a feminine um, noun instead of having a masculine noun and then use it in a feminine sense. Okay? These are not used with otro, tal, medio, que, and mil. For example, no tiene otro remedio. I don't have any other medio. Remedy, sorry. Que chica tan rara. 
What a win. Okay. No habría hecho tal cosa. Okay. Moving on with nouns. The gender of nouns and forming the plurals of nouns. Okay. The gender of some nouns are biological. El hijo, la hija, el gallo, la gallina. Okay. These are very straightforward. Nouns ending with O aren't always masculine. Nouns ending in A aren't always feminine. Therefore, some nouns contradict this rule. Okay, so here are a few examples. El día, el problema, el planeta, el idioma, la mano, la radio, la foto. Now, this la foto, it's just short for la fotografía. Okay, so that's why it's la foto. So we say la foto and las fotos. Okay? Please note, these are very important for easy, easy um, memory. You can just remember noisy rule and just add on these other things that I've included. So we're going to start using these in an example. No me fascina el olor del garaje. I don't, the, the smell in the garage doesn't fascinate me. Okay? El aprendizaje no siempre tiene que ser abrido. Learning doesn't always have to be boring. Okay? So know that el aprendizaje y el olor y el garaje. Now remember earlier we had de plus el es del, so del garaje. Okay? A mí me gusta el rojo más que el azul. I like red more than the blue. Okay? Let's go on to naranjo. <clears throat> un naranjo. Now we all know that una naranja is an orange. Right? So un naranjo would be an orange tree. Okay? So anytime you want to fall uh, the tree of a of a fruit, generally it's the masculine form. Okay. Nouns with the endings ion, tad, etc. are generally feminine. For example, hoy en día existe una mejor solución para mejorar la salud. Nowadays there is a better solution to improve your health. Okay. So we're going to say that una solución and la salud. Okay, so notice the endings very carefully. La actriz tuvo mucha dificultad para aprender su papel. The actress had a lot of difficulties in learning her role. Now know that su papel, papel has a dual meaning. Papel also means paper. But in most senses, it also means role. Not role of toilet people, like role as in you're playing a role. Right? Okay. Él tomó una decisión basada en la incertidumbre. He made a decision based on uncertainty. Right? So notice, umbre. Not while there's also another word, um, la muchedumbre, that means crowd. Okay? The names of fruits are generally feminine, except el limón, el plátano, and el mango. Now there are more, but I've just included these three for um, comparison. Okay, um, the letters of the alphabet are feminine. For example, la n, which stands for n. Okay. Many common nouns ending in ma are masculine. For example, el clima, el sistema, el tema, el pijama. Okay. Exceptions are la cama and la forma. They both end in ma, but they are feminine. Okay, so I've used it in a sentence here. No puedo dormir en otra cama sin mi pijama favorito. Okay, I can't sleep in another bed without my favorite pajama. Okay? And as I was saying earlier, new feminine words for professions. Okay, la jefa means a female boss. Okay? The pluralization of nouns. Most nouns in Spanish form the plural by adding s if they are end in a vowel or a stressed e. El agua, las aguas, el domingo, los domingos, el té, los tés. Okay? Now, I've used el agua because I want to demonstrate that agua is still feminine, but we use el agua because it puts a strain on your voice when you say la agua. Okay, so we use el agua, but las aguas. So agua is feminine, sorry. Okay? To form these, we just add es to the boat. Okay? However, nouns ending in an unstressed vowel and s do not change in the plural. For example, el lunes, los lunes. Okay? Monday, 
Mondays, right? Nouns ending in Z change the ending to CES in the plural. Laos, las voces. Ves, veces. Por ejemplo, muchas veces no me gusta oír su voz. Lots of time, very often I don't like to hear her voice, right? Nouns with an accent on the last syllable lose the accent in the plural. For example, la opinión, las opiniones. Note the accent has been lost, right? Same for el francés, los franceses. The French person or the French woman, right? Someone from France and French people, okay? Some nouns are used in the masculine plural but refer to both genders. We should know this. Los hermanos, los hijos, los padres, okay? Brothers, sons, brothers, children, um, um, parents. Okay. Proper names do not have a separate plural form, however. Los Gomez, the Gomez, right? The Gomez family, so to speak. Okay. Let's get to the chunk of it, which is adjectives. These four, these five things would be accomplished in this segment of the video, right? As we know, mucho, muchos, mucha, muchas, barato, baratos, barata, baratas. Okay. Most adjectives do not end in O and R, have the same form for masculine and feminine in the plural. Dulce, which means sweet, and real, which means real. Okay. The adjectives ending in Z are changed to C in the plural, and you add yes according to when we're pluralizing nouns. It's the same, same rules that apply. Capaces. Okay, adjectives ending in these to make the feminine as to make the feminine. Sorry, él es trabajador y ella es trabajadora. Ellas son trabajadoras, ellos son trabajadores. Now, this means that he is hardworking and she is hardworking. The girls are hardworking, the boys are hardworking. So, note the difference. Is a normal A here, and this ends in a consonant. So we added ES, and then we add S here because it ends in a vowel. So we are going to add AS to make the feminine. Okay? Add. Sorry. <laughs> not well, comparative adjectives do not have a separate feminine now. Por ejemplo, mayor, mayores. Okay? And that means more. Um, better. Adjectives agree with the nouns. They describe a number. Por ejemplo, un nuevo problema. Unos días hermosos. Tres mujeres felices. Una mano dura. Okay? So this is un nuevo problema. Note well that problema is masculine. So it's un nuevo problema. Okay? Adjectives are normally placed after nouns. A mí no me gustan chicas bajas. I don't like short girls. Okay, so the adjective is placed after the noun, and it agrees in number also. Adjectives are sometimes placed before nouns to indicate a special emphasis on the adjective, such as an emotional reaction, rather than describing it. Por ejemplo, una oscura noche, a dark night. La nueva casa, now note very well that la nueva casa should be la casa nueva in general circumstances, but if there is an emotional reaction or attachment to the house, or you want to specify that it's very much new, you can say la nueva casa. Okay? These adjectives here are not placed generally before a noun. Bueno, buena, malo, malo, pequeño, pequeña, grande, grande. Cardinal and ordinal numbers and ultimo are mi primer viaje a Sudamérica, los últimos días. Okay? Note, they are before the noun. Okay? Some common adjectives such as ambos, llamado, otro, mucho, or muchos, poco, or pocos, tanto, or tantos, and their respective feminine, they come also before the noun. Okay? Vinieron ambos padres, both parents came. Okay? These adjectives here are shortened before singular noun. So please take note. Um, grande loses the final de before singular now, so we say una gran familia, not una grande familia, okay? 
Comparative adjectives. These are very important, especially in writing paper two for the CSEC level. Right? If you want to compare something, you say mass plus that adjective plus k means more, whatever the adjective is, and done. The same applies for menos. For example, Maria is más trabajadora que Isabel. Maria is more hardworking than Isabel. Okay? Now, this is used with the nouns, when there's a noun. Okay? Tanto, whatever um, noun there is, como, which would be as much as. Okay? Ya no tengo, so, sorry, yo no tengo tanto dinero como Juan. I don't have as much money as John. Okay? This is also used as, as, and they are only used with adjectives and adverbs. Okay? So this is very important. Don't mix them up. Okay? Ariana is tan inteligente como su hermano. Ariana is as intelligent as her brother. Okay? Um, the same applies here. So, cuanto más comemos, tanto más engordamos. The more we eat, the more we get fat. Okay? Okay. Now, these are irregular forms of adjectives. And in the comparison, you should learn these. Okay? The opposite, more or less. Actually, no, sorry, it's not opposite. It's a comparison. Bueno, mejor. Malo, peor. Mucho, más. Poco, menos. Grande, mayor. Pequeño, menor. For example, Juan ha sacado mejores notas que Micael. Right? Ha sacado mejores notas. Has gotten better grades than Michael. Okay? When a number follows mass or menos, it is followed by de and not k. So you've noticed that we had k all the time. But when there is um, numbers, it's followed by de. Okay? Yo tengo más de 4,000 amigos en Facebook. Well, this should be amigos. Sorry. Okay. okay. The superlative adjective conveys the idea of most and are formed by either placing the definite article before the comparative or by adding isimo or isima to the adjective. Puerto España es la ciudad más desarrollada en Trinidad y Tobago. Puerto España is the is the city that's most developed in Trinidad and Tobago. Okay. El español es el idioma más fácil aprender. Spanish is the easiest language to learn. Note, el idioma. This is another example of um, a noun that ends in ME and is masculine. Okay? La casa más nueva. Right? So all these are superlatives in examples. When isimo is added to the final vowel. Sorry, when isimo is added, the final vowel is normally removed. Contento, contentísimo, okay, and etc. Now, just note the spelling changes with these endings, okay? Personal pronouns, we're down to pronouns. Now, you should get a copy of this. You should know these by now if you're at the CSEC level. So, I'll just go on to explaining what they're used for. The subject pronouns in Spanish are used basically for clarity, emphasis, or contrast. Soy yo. It's me, when you're talking on the telephone. Okay? Cuando comemos fuera, ella siempre escoge helado y yo fruta. Okay? So when we eat out, she always chooses ice cream and I choose fruits. Okay? So that's why we put the yo and ella, for clarity, to, to, to distinguish between these two. Okay? When a distinction is needed for, for the person you're referring to or speaking about, Usted puede ayudarme con el castellano. Um, note well that el castellano is a synonym for Spanish. Okay, this refers to the language that is um, used in Spain. Okay. ¿Saben ustedes dónde está la oficina de turismo? Right, so we need to put usted puede ayudarme. Okay. Because then this could have been, can he help me with Spanish? Okay. Now, what we need to do is learn off everything in these tables. These are very important. Okay? So let's continue. This would be the indirect object pronouns and the latter direct pronouns. Okay? Okay. Object pronouns are normally placed before the verb 
por ejemplo, la vi ayer en la calle. I saw her yesterday in the street. Spanish people tend to use object pronouns very, very much. Sometimes you may get confused because you're just seeing la, le, te, no, slice all over the place and you don't know what they are for. So if you have trouble like that, you should pay um, particular attention here. Okay? Um, this should be to us and to them. Don't know why it's missing. Okay. Object pronouns are normally added to the end of an to the end of an infinite or gerund. Quiero decirte algo importante. I want to tell you something important. So this decir is the infinitive. Okay? And yo estoy haciendo la hora. I'm doing it now. This would be an example of the gerund. However, in speaking, I prefer use this alternative before the auxiliary verb, which would be me puedes hacer un favor. Can you do me a favor? Instead of using puedes hacerme un favor, which would be up here, hacerme after the infinitive there is me. Okay, but I prefer use me puedes hacer un favor because it sounds a lot more smooth. Okay? With the positive command, the object pronoun comes after the command. Abrelo. Okay, that's a positive command, so it comes directly after. However, if it's in the negative, no, la, no lo abras ahora, you're saying don't open it now. Right? This is the um, subjunctive that we would deal with in the other video. Okay? The order of object pronouns are very important, and this is where some people get a bit of a problem when trying to understand Spanish. I've struggled with it early on, and now I'm no longer struggle with it, okay? Te lo compro. I will buy you it. Okay? So I'm buying it for you. Technically. I am buying it for you. So it's going for you. Right? The indirect always goes first. Now note that when two third person object pronouns come together, the lay and the lace become say. Right? So te lo compro. I am buying it. Right? Just as above it. But for him, right, which would have been le, okay, using your indirect pronouns, but to avoid the le lo compro, we use se lo compro, okay? Another example, se lo preguntaste, did you ask him or her or them it, okay? So this is it, and this is, this would have been le, okay? These are very important. Right? These are the disjunctives, and you need to know them because they are frequently used, especially in Spanish. Okay? <clears throat> the disjunctive or strong pronouns are used after prepositions. Por ejemplo, no quiero ir al cine con él. I don't want to go to the cinema with him. Okay? So before we would have seen that lo and le would connotate him, right? But now we're using él. After pronouns, okay? So just take a quick note of this. Yo entre el coche después de ella. I entered the car after her. So this is her, de ella. Preposition, preposition. We use the disjunctive pronouns, okay? These are the same, therefore, except with me, t, and c. Now we would explain c a little later because it's reflexive, okay? So when they're connected with con, they become conmigo, contigo, consigo. Okay? So this is con él, con ella, conmigo, contigo, consigo. Okay? The reflexive part would be a bit, not technical, but it would be explained a little later. Okay? So what we need to really understand here is that after prepositions, we use él, ella, nosotros, ellos, ellas, ustedes, etc. Okay? But when it's come... Combined with con, it becomes conmigo, contigo, consigo. Okay? Alright. Ella salió su casita tomando su hijo consigo. This is an example of the reflexive consigo. She left her house taking her son with her. Okay? She left taking her son with her. So he went with her. Okay? That's where the consigo comes in. Reflexive pronouns are part of reflexive verbs and refer back to the subject. Okay? Now, these are very straightforward. Okay? 
Another use of the disjunctive pronoun, si, combines with con to make consigo. A menudo habla consigo mismo. At times, he talks to himself, okay? Often, sorry. These, the same rules apply to reflexive pronouns as object pronouns. That is, they are added to the end of gerunds, infinitives, and imperatives, etc. Okay? No puedo despertarme antes de las siete. Okay? Vete enseguida. That means, go away immediately. Demonstratives. Now, these are very important when using everyday speech because we tend to say this and that, this and that, as opposed to hand me the bottle, hand me the spoon, etc. Okay? So just take a note of these in the table. Right? Este is normally the equivalent of this in English, and both este and aquel means that. Right? However, the distinction is drawn where AC refers to something which is near to the listener, and Akil refers to something which is distant from both the speaker and the listener. Okay? So we're going to get, Yo estoy muy cansado. ¿Me puedes pasar este almohada en lugar de esta? Okay? Can you hand me that pillow instead of this one? So I'll be having a pillow in my hand and I'll say, Can you pass me that pillow instead of this one? Okay? This one comes from esa, which would be the pronouns. There's a difference between the pronouns and the um, adjectives, right? And esa came from here, which would be um, that, okay? So can you pass me that pillow instead of this one, okay? The demonstrative pronouns differ in form due to the addition of an accent, okay? So, esta and esta, okay? Esta, esta, okay? Very well. Um, much students have problems with mixing up these three, right? So, it's esta, esta, and esta, okay? Both ese and aquel mean ex both Ese and aquel mean that one, and ese refers to something near the listener and the speaker, and aquel refers to something that is distant to both the speaker and the listener. Okay? So this is a little dialogue here that to demonstrate these. Por favor, quisiera probarme una falda. Okay? So the clerk would now be like, um, ¿Te gusta esta? Right? Do you like this one? Then I would reply, no, prefiero esa. Right, which would be the one over there, that one over there. Okay? And then she may ask, ¿Por qué no te pruebas aquella también? Okay? Why don't you try that one all the way over there? Okay? So, esa would be, no prefiero esa. Right? The one that's right there. It's right there for us. Okay? The neuter form of the demonstrative pronouns is as follows. Right? <clears throat> Esto me gusta mucho. That's when you just want to say, I like it very much, right? We don't know what is it, so we use the, um, the neutral. Okay? Esto de tus notas me preocupa. This matter can see your grade. It's worrying. Okay? Possessive adjectives and pronouns are used to indicate belonging and relationship between people and things. So you can pause the video and take a note of these. Because as long as you know your vocab and these tables, you should be prepared. Okay? They agree in number and gender with the person not being possessed. Alright? Mis abuelos esperan que sus nietos aprendan inglés. My grandparents hope um, that their grandchildren learn English. Okay? Mis abuelos. My grandparents. However, your has different forms and depends on whether you are referring to the other person using the formal or the familiar mode of address. Tienes tu entrada? Tienes su entrada? Ustedes tienen sus entradas? Okay? Do you have your ticket? Do you have your ticket? Do you all have your tickets? Right? Sus entradas? Su entrada? Tu entrada? Right? A second form of the possessive adjective is the same as the possessive pronoun, and this translates to be of mine, of yours. Okay? Un amigo nuestro. A friend of ours. Okay? I tend to say, um, 
una o un perito mío right? o el perito mío the, that dog of mine o ese perito mío that dog of mine right possessive pronouns a great number in general with the personal thing possess possess sorry and are preceded by the relevant definite article except after the verb ser okay so sus padres tienen tres casas pero los míos tienen una okay so her parents have three houses but mine's los míos have one okay and the same goes here. It agrees with the object. Esta casa roja es mía. Okay? Now, I'm masculine. But it agrees with the object. Okay? Relative pronouns and adjectives are very important. Because you tend to see these. K and K and lo cual, el cual. And it may become confusing. But I've tried to simplify it as much as possible. The relative pronouns are regularly omitted in English. but not in Spanish. For example, la fiesta que celebramos ayer terminó muy tarde. The party we celebrated yesterday finished very late. Right? Notice I left out that we celebrated. Right? But in Spanish is very important to put it in. Okay? However, please note that a preposition used with a relative pronoun cannot be separated from it, unlike in English. La escuela a que asististe. Okay? The school to which you are you um went to okay we could just say the school you went to the school you attended but in spanish a que asististe okay because it is asistir a okay k is the most common and is used as an object pronoun as a subject pronoun sorry and as an object pronoun for things not people okay so mi madre es una mujer que admiro okay my mother is a woman that i admire and el avión que fuiste ayer, the plane that you bought yesterday. Okay? Oh, I'm sorry. Mi madre es una mujer que admiro. My mother is a woman who I admire. Terribly sorry. Que can also mean who, according to this. Okay? El que, la que, los que, and las que are frequently used after preposition. El día en el que ocurrió el terremoto. The day on which the earthquake earthquake happened okay so we need to include lk okay because it comes after the preposition in okay la mujer de la que se enamoró the woman which he or she he, well i assume it would be he <laughs> fell in love with right comes after they so we have la que okay Quién is the singular form and its plural is quienes and is used for people only and usually after prepositions. Okay? La chica a quien viste en el supermercado es mi hermano menor. Right? The girl that you saw in the supermarket is my younger sister. Right? These are just basically used in a more formal sense. So Isabella es la mujer con la cual vas a viajar. Right? This would be used in, in writing, la cual. Isabella es la mujer con la que vas a viajar. This would be more used in speech. Okay? So the only difference is formality between el cual, la cual, etc. Okay? Cuyo is an adjective, right? Disagrees in number and gender with the noun that follows. <clears throat> Por ejemplo, esta es la muchacha cuya vida es una inspiración a la mayoría de la sociedad. This is the girl whose life, right? So note that it is feminine singular because the noun is also feminine and singular. Okay, so this is the girl whose life is an inspiration to the majority of society. Right? Now we're on to interrogatives. These are words that are used to introduce questions. So you can take a quick pause and copy down these. Direct questions. Que can be both a pronoun and an adjective. Que dijiste? Que hora es? And what did you say? And what time is it? Right? This, however, is the usual way of translating what. Right? Por ejemplo, ¿Cuál es tu nombre? Or, ¿Cuál es tu opinión sobre el machismo? Right? What is your opinion and what is your name? 
However, it also means which when having a choice between alternatives. So if we're using qual, as in qual muchacho prefieres, el rico or el guapo, right? For the for you ladies, um, which which boy do you prefer, the rich one or the handsome one? Okay, so this is the difference here. These this is an alternative. You have to choose between. So we qual would be translated as which, and up here, it's just before. Where is it, right? It's just the usual way of translating what. Okay. Quien quiere jugar con mi perrito? Who wants to play with my dog, right? My 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 little boy, dog, right? And de quien es este paraguas? Whose umbrella is this? Okay. So know that who here is quien, sorry, is used as who, and de quien is used as who or of who, right? Como sabías que venía yo? How you knew that I was coming? Right? So, como generally means how. Right? Um, please know this can be very useful for the CSEC. Como es means how is it or como fue, how was it, etc. Okay? Like, como fue la rumba? How was the party? Um, please know that la rumba is like a fat in Trinidad, right? But you can use the, the word fiesta. Okay? Which we should know as party. Now, donde and a donde. Note it's not separated, right? The a is joined to donde, right? So, a typical example would be donde estas and a donde vas, okay? Um, I just want to teach you all really quickly what is sinalefa, right? We don't say donde estas, we say donde estas, right? Sinalefa is where this ends in an e and begins in an e and you technically join them when you're speaking. So you say donde estas, right? Instead of donde estas, okay? A donde is used to indicate movement towards a place, okay? For example, a que es la playa a donde fuimos hace unos años? That is the beach to which we went um, a few years ago, right? Let's move on to por qué. Por qué hay que asistir a la escuela? Why does one have to to go to school? You know, I mean, that's a question a lot of us ask. Right? So please note that they are separated and there is an accent on the E. And I just put in por qué es necesario para conseguir un buen trabajo as a response to the question to to say that por qué without being separated, right? Just means because. Okay. So let's move on to cuánto. Can be both an adjective and a pronoun, right? In its um adjective form, right? We'd have cuánto cuesta este ese vestido? How much does this um dress cost, right? And in cuántos películas usted quiere comprar, right? This would be the adjective, cuántas películas, right? Describing quantity, okay? And this would be the pronoun, right? In the indirect questions also be an accent. No sé a qué hora comienza esa película. I don't know what time this movie is starting. Right? Exclamations. Now, in especially when I go to Venezuela, it they exclaim a lot. Right? So I mean they are they are rarely used when writing, but it's still good to know the grammar. Okay, in case if you have to write an essay and use exclamations, right? So these always be an accent. And there are two types of exclamations, as direct exclamations and indirect exclamations. So we start with the direct exclamations. Que pena! What a shame! You know? Um, you should note this, as it was um, mentioned earlier, an adjective which follows K plus a noun as precede, plus a noun, is preceded by tan o mas. Que chica tan hermosa or que chica tan mas hermosa. Right? What a beautiful girl. Right? Como? Y no te llamo él? Right? I mean, it sounds like a question, but it's an exclamation. For example, if um, a boy leaves a girl, you know, how you all, how girls gossip, they'll be like, um, 
and he didn't call you you mean like like what all right how what what happened you know homo right that's the best of expl exclamation i can give you but right um quanto can be an adverb or an adjective right quantas veces me has dicho eso right now that was said very calmly but if i say quantas veces me has dicho eso how much times have you told me that you know indirect exclamations always be an accent no sé cómo te atreves a decirme eso i don't know how you dare say that to me. you know please note this is a complex usage right? and i just want to say that um thanks for your time and i hope that you all do very good in exams and gracias por su tiempo espero que saquen buenas notas en sus exámenes and I hope that this video is very helpful. I would be doing verbs and other um, troublesome parts of Spanish later on. And any questions, please feel free to message me. Right? And I would get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you. Do have a great day.